Hey everybody. I want to sort of dive into the mechanics of how and why uh, a an exaggerated lie uh, is believed. Um, I've always talked about how to identify someone when they're lying. Um, but on the other hand, I want to talk about how, how, how it's possible to be listening to a version of events or listening to somebody and you're questioning uh, the validity of what they're saying and you still choose to accept the accept it as valid and um, why you tend to still kind of sort of believe it even though you doubt it um, so a lot of lies especially when you're dealing with somebody who is very proficient at it a lot of times a lie is not an outright lie um, when we think of lies we think of uh, when somebody tells a big lie, um, what comes to mind is like Bill Clinton essentially perjuring himself, where he's saying, I did not have sexual relations with that woman, Miss Lewinsky, right? Well, he did, and he's clearly up there saying that he did not. Um, that's what comes to mind when, when I think of somebody telling a lie. Uh, is that style but the thing is uh, there's a difference between uh, that kind of lying uh, and then the really proficient pathological lies that uh, are that come from a place they they a proficient liar will, will, will spring lies from a source of validity uh, and they sell the lie as kind of sort of it's it's like a, a nice big slice of cake with a little layer of of, of got lysing like lie icing um the lie is the icing on the cake so it's it's basically a, a really truthy statement uh with a little bit of a false aftertaste uh and it, it leaves you wondering uh, whether you know just how true is this uh, and that's the space that proficient liars um, you know walk in in their day-to-day -day. when when a very proficient liar presents you with something you're left thinking how true is this well how true is that you know or, I don't know how true that is uh, and, and it's it's a psychological hack right because you're not thinking of you know is this an outright lie you're sitting there thinking it's like well I mean that's that's pretty much true for the most part right for the most part well what's the false part what's the deceptive part um, it, it, but, but we tend to um, we tend to disavow that or ignore it because we feel that what was said or done was mostly honest, was mostly true, uh, and we kind of sort of censor out the part that we disagree with. Um, and that's how, that's how a lie is sold, right? It doesn't have to be a 100% pure lie. You see what I mean? The deceptive part of it piggybacks on the truth. It's a lie sandwich. Um, you know, you've got this really truthy piece of bread, a really falsy layer of, uh, you know, lies, and then uh, another truthy piece of bread on top of it. That's how you get somebody to, to accept the lie. It rides in on the truth. Um, and this is very, very apparent uh, in a Joe Rogan podcast that he did recently with Alex Jones. Um, and what I will say is this, in the podcast, there are a lot of controversial but true facts that are presented. Controversial but true. Things like Project Paperclip, where after World War II, the U.S. government actually brought 1,600 Nazis over to the U.S. and gave them high-ranking government jobs and had Nazis working for the government uh, right after World War II, which is insane if you think about it. It's like us bringing people from ISIS over here and then putting them in charge of, you know, human rights councils and CPS and shit. Um, that's literally what they did after World War II. Like 1,600 Nazis 
and gave them various jobs in the U.S. Uh, it's, it's nuts. Uh, and that was Project Paperclip. Um, you know, it, for those who don't know who Alex Jones is, he runs a website. It's been around for about, God, about 15, 20 years. 20 years, maybe. Um, definitely longer than 10 years. Uh, he he runs a website called Infowars where he presents, um, you know, just the stuff that, that people aren't talking about. And some of it goes into conspiracy. But he sees himself as a champion of, of uncovering the truth. Um, I, and I'm not going to dive too deep into it. I, I'll say that he does present a lot of things that are truthful, and I think he exaggerates a lot of things. He got in really big uh, hot water after the Sandy Hook shooting for... Uh, saying that you know it may very well be a false flag event um it or that you know it was it was set up by the government and that it didn't actually happen um he has since and, and on the joe rogan podcast he he's the first thing is he he admits he's wrong which was uh, unexpected you don't typically see somebody admitting that they got it wrong and alex jones is uh admitting that he got it wrong um but I, I, I'm bringing up the podcast be, uh, for several reasons. Number one, uh, Joe Rogan and, and Alex Jones, at least according to the podcast, they've been friends for a very, very long time. Uh, and they've known each other for a very long time. Uh, and their friendship recently suffered uh, a few years ago, I think over the Sandy Hook thing and, and over maybe a few other things. Um, and so they, they, they make up on the show, right? So it's, you know, bro forgives bro kind of moment. And that's how the show starts. Uh, it's a very, very good exhibit and a very good example of how to make amends with people. Um, it's really kind of sort of, uh, you know, heartwarming and touching to see people do that because you don't see a lot of it anymore. Uh, but then for the next five hours, and this is this is why I think it's worth watching, um, a couple of things. Alex Jones is known for uh, being very intense, getting himself worked up, um, and almost sort of going into crisis mode, meltdown mode, over and over and over again. And the podcast goes for almost five hours, and most of the time it's just spent listening to Alex Jones just just go off the deep end. Uh, and Joe Rogan is is keeping him calm. Joe Rogan takes the role of emotional regulator, um, which if you're in a relationship with somebody who's emotionally unstable, that becomes your your full time job. is It's your job to keep them regulated and grounded. Uh, Joe Rogan takes this position over and over and over. You hear him say. Alex, we believe you. I believe you. You're right. You're right. No, you're right. You're absolutely right. And we believe you. Um, and, and keeping Alex Jones relatively tamed uh, throughout the, the, the five-hour-long podcast. It's a very interesting podcast because Alex Jones does present a lot of things that are true. Um, they're true, but he exaggerates them. You know, in his head, he gets work, he gets so worked up that it starts to get inflated and exaggerated, um, and that's the space that pathological liars walk in. I'm not calling Alex Jones a liar because, as I said, he's presenting truths and he's presenting facts, but he also says a lot of things for which there's no way to verify it. So, for every one thing that they verify, he has said like ten or twelve things that you can't really verify. Uh, the, the biggest example of that is he, al he always cites um, that his father uh, had privileged confidential information because he worked for the government whenever he was younger. Uh, and that I remember my father telling me this. I remember my father telling me that. Um, I remember in childhood this happened. And growing up this happened. Growing up that happened, you know. Um, so he always makes these references to his own personal past. Um, those things are not verifiable and what i'm saying is is in the pre presentations that alex jones does if he were to put a lie or an exaggeration or a falsehood it's those narratives that the pathological liars put their lies in not the actual uh facts themselves not the actual events but when they start to draw up on their own personal experiences or their past or their childhood, the shit you can't confirm, it's a natural tendency to accept what they're saying as also fact because they're presenting something truthful. 
And in the process of presenting something truthful, they slide something in. Um, and that's, that's where the lie rides. Uh, so if you watch this podcast, uh, he'll present some facts, he gets worked up, and then you hear him talking about uh, uh, relating to it with a personal story. Uh, and overwhelmingly, it's, this, it's the same package delivered repeatedly for the better part of five hours. So uh, I'll leave you with this because I don't, I don't want to say that, that Alex Jones is lying um, because he's, he's not. But he's also telling stories for which there's no way to verify. Uh, and, you know, watch the podcast. At least, at a minimum, watch the opener uh, where they're making amends because there's a lot to be learned there. Um, it's not something you see very much of uh, these days. Um, I, I would credit their age and the fact that they're in my generation that, that we know how to do this a little better than um, perhaps the younger generation. Um, but then, you know, watch the podcast. Hold on for the ride. It is a trip. I'll say this. The podcast is a trip. And they he goes way way out out to left field and then just whenever you think that it's like there's no way this is true then he points joe rogan and and friends to um you know actual facts like the national geographic for example the whole concept that that scientists have developed a pig human hybrid and that they're using that they're raising pig human hybrids uh with with human organs um to circumvent laws because there's human rights and animal rights but if you have something that's half human, half animal, it falls into the gray area. And so the code word is a gray or chimera. Um, and how they, they have, you know, these, these chimera farms over in China where they're, uh, you know, harvesting lots of human tissue and, and they're breeding humans with pigs. Uh, it sounds all crazy. And then he points you to a news article uh, and it's been confirmed that, that yes, this is indeed happening. But it's delivered, it's perhaps not nearly as apocalyptic as Alex Jones presents it. Uh, but again, we don't know because we're not over in China walking around on, on the, the, the chimera farm looking at these half-human, half-pig hybrids. Uh, so you, you just don't know. But that, that's, that's a, I'll, I'll leave you with that as a teaser. Um, and it's, it's just five hours of this unbelievable stuff talking about uh, how Nazis believed they contacted aliens, uh, how Nazis came to work for the U.S. Russia actually took 2,200 Nazis. Again, this is this is true history. Um, the space shuttle was uh, d originally designed by the Nazis. All six moon landings for the U.S. government were overseen by uh, a guy who was a former Nazi. Like, that's true. Um, man, they, he goes into... Uh, discusses what happens uh, with abortion L like after the abortion happens what happens to the fetus uh, man uh, he, the, he goes on and on and on uh, so it's it's very very captivating to say the least but watch it just so you can see the style of, of Alex Jones and understand that it's also a similar style that, that can be used to push deception and really listen to it and, and listen to what I'm, I'm, I'm trying to tell you here. Because if you can, if you can listen to Alex Jones uh, without, getting, with, without getting pulled in too much, but separate the stuff that's verifiable from the stuff that's not verifiable, watch this podcast and practice that skill because I can promise you this skill will come in, um, it, it will be incredibly useful to you in all areas of your life. If you learn to listen to somebody who's, um, who's amped up, who's exaggerating, um, learn to listen to them and don't think in terms of, of, of you know, facts and fiction, true and false. Just think in terms of verifiable, unverifiable. Uh, and that will keep you sane. And then you can take this skill set with you and apply it to the rest of your life. I'm out of time, but thank you very much for listening. Please like, comment, or share. I'll try to post a link uh, to the podcast if I can remember. If there's no link in the comments, somebody please just comment and tell me, hey, dumbass, you forgot. So anyways, uh, please like, comment, or share. I'll see you on another video.